Hanilin Smith Robinson and Terrestrial Bird Conservation Manager for BirdLife South Africa, which means looking specifically at the conservation of our threatened bird species in the country. So some of the focal projects that I'm focusing on include the white-winged flufftail, secretary bird, tighter falcon, uh, southern banded snake eagle, amongst many others. We've also recently launched projects on common birds, so we're specifically looking at two common bird species as ambassadors for many other species using similar habitats, those of the orange-breasted waxball and the European roller. We have five critically endangered species, globally critically endangered species in South Africa now. Up to last year, there were only two species, the white-winged flufftail and the Tristan albatross. And sadly, last year, another three species, three vulture species were uplisted to globally critically endangered. Those vultures are um, wooded vultures, white-backed vultures and white-headed vultures. But the white-winged flufftail occurs in South Africa and Ethiopia and it was uplisted to globally critically endangered in 2014 due to the critical threat of habitat loss in both countries. So we estimate that there's about 250 of those birds left in the world. They breed in Ethiopia, in Burger Wetland, which is close to Addis Ababa. So we know about only one breeding site for the species and three sites where they're known to occur in Ethiopia. And they're only there in their summer months. So from June to September, then arrive here in South Africa from November to uh, March the next year. So there's a couple of months in between, we're not sure where the species actually is, whether it's migrating. So it was important for us to understand the migratory connection between the South African and the Ethiopian white-winged flufftails. And in order to do so, we started with genetic and isotope studies. So we had to collect blood samples from both Ethiopian and South African birds. We managed to do that rather easily in Ethiopia. It was far more difficult to catch white-winged flufftails here in South Africa. But we've now completed the first genetics and the results show that there's only three interspecific, interspecific variations between the white-winged flufftails collected in South Africa compared to those collected in Ethiopia, which makes it very, very likely that it's one species and that they are migratory. The isotope results support what we find with the genetic results, showing a wide um, variety of carbon isotope values um, probably showing that they're molting in many different habitats, different C3 and C4 habitats, but um, the Ethiopian and the South African birds don't show any difference. So it's no significant difference, again, pointing towards only one species. Knowing that, we know that it's even more important that we can't only, we as BirdLife South Africa and the Middlepoint Wetland Trust, focusing on the conservation of the species, can't only focus our efforts here in South Africa, whereas if the bird's breeding in Ethiopia, it's critically important to conserve its breeding habitat in Ethiopia. So in Ethiopia, where overgrazing is a major threat to the species, and that's overgrazing by cattle, horses, and sheep. That's where specifically we work with the community. So where community involvement becomes critical to the survival of a species. So a school was built there where 1,200 pupils go to the school on a daily basis. And um, this school is also called the Flufftail School because it was built with um, Flufftail funds. And for that, the local community, the site support group and the dairy farmers um, protect the local wetland. So there's no grazing during the breeding season um, by any of the cattle, horses or sheep and gives the bird the opportunity to breed in that area. Back here in South Africa, we also face many threats, um, particularly habitat loss, the same as in Ethiopia but from different directions. So mining, coal mining be a, being a particular threat to the species, so pollution um, of our water and wetland systems, and then also overgrazing and um, the wrong burning practices. So coming back to management of this wetland habitats. It's a relative positive response, specifically from farmers. So we find that most of the farmers get very passionate about the birds and would want to be involved in the protection of those species. So part of our plan is also that those areas, some of, the, some of the areas are already formally protected or they're already important bird and biodiversity areas. Those that don't qualify as yet, we would like to list either as IBAs or more importantly, given the formal protected status as a nature reserve. <laughs>